I didn't understand I was going to be in this ministry. I had no idea what therapy dogs were when I first started it. <laughs> but God knew. Yeah. <laughs> and he knew the path that he wanted me to take. If you stay the course, God can change you. And it's, he can. <laughs> Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. Hey, friends, will you take just a minute and imagine how great you'd feel living the unique and distinct life you were put on this planet to live, doing work you love, with people you love, and dogs you love, and places you love, and all the while creating something of real value for others. That's what I call a life of significance. And I can tell you it makes for a very happy life. And so can Larry Randolph. He's my guest star today, and he's here to share his unique and distinct journey to his life of significance. Hey, Larry, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Looking forward to speaking to you and all the people that are listening. Very Got some good. Good interesting things to talk about. <laughs> very good. Well, why don't you get us started by telling us what you're doing these days to make your mark of significance on the world? Well, I'm the founder of Canines for Christ, and Canines for Christ Therapy Dog Ministry is a an international ministry using uh, average people in their average dogs to uh, bring out God's powerful love and hope and compassion uh, to visit with people that are in lonely or sick or, or elderly or uh, in many other conditions. And we've uh, we've uh, over the uh, 16 years that the ministry has been in existence, we've discipled uh, thousands of people. Uh, to get involved with us, and uh, and then millions of people every year are really touched by God's love through this ministry. So that's that's what we've been doing, and uh, for this many years. And I just completed uh, my next role was writing a book. So I did okay. complete complete a book called Finding Grace, and that is a story of Canines for Christ and the, my journey on getting it going so to speak but god yeah. taking control of it and really blessing it all over all these years that's very good a couple of questions so how many states are you operating in how many countries we're in uh eight countries and 38 states and uh we have approximately 1300 volunteers okay. uh in those in those areas of the of uh, uh all over and as i said it's uh uh it's an easy ministry to get involved with because you have you love dogs you yeah. love God, well, love God first, but your dogs and you yeah. love serving. You can yeah. take all that together and then and, and, and visit. And it's amazing to see how the ministry of presence acts in that in, in that setting. So it's it's pretty cool. Great. And I saw that your book was just published like weeks ago, right? Yes, it was published actually, uh it came out October 17th. Okay. And uh uh it's uh got in one of the stages of Amazon's reviews that got to be the number one review book wow. and which is a positive thing so for us so very excited about that but yeah it's a story of the ministry and a, really a journey of my faith and how obedience trust and uh and just the faith and how god blessed it through all these journeys that i went through and uh, and also stories of how the therapy dogs have touched people's lives and uh, it made a difference in in many different settings in many different lives by uh, being there and letting God work through the dogs to to help people in their struggles. It's a beautiful story. Very, very good. Congratulations. And and so for our listeners that are also have a book in them, give us just a minute or so on, I think it was a couple year process I might've read about. Just tell That's us correct. about how difficult it was, how rewarding it was, what you learned, what you would what you would advise if somebody has a book that they feel they want to write. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, pray about it. You know, they, you know, you go get. You have a story to tell, and it's your story. And but ask God to give you the uh, the perseverance to uh, to continue and to and to write the story. And then, uh, well, what happened with us is that it's a very unusual situation is that I had a, I got a call one day from a publisher, Tyndale, which is the major Christian publisher in the country. And they actually asked me to write a book. Hmm. Uh, I didn't, I cool. wasn't really contemplating writing it at that stage. I wasn't, yeah. didn't have a manuscript. I didn't have anything 
ready, so to speak, but they said, we've heard about your story. We've heard about, we've reviewed your ministry. We would like to, to, for you to write a book. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I, uh, I, I said, well, that's, that's, I would love to write a book, but I don't really know how to write a book. Mm -hmm. And they said, we'll take it from here. We'll sign you a lady that has written books, uh, Christian books, and she's a, 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 a well-known writer in, in the animal field and Christian writing. Okay. And she's got bestsellers out and she will help you write the book. So it's a storybook. And Jennifer Bleakley, which is in Raleigh, North Carolina, that's where she lives. Uh -huh. uh, she and I collaborated together and it took us a year to write the book. What, what I did, Matt, was that I, for 16 years, I've written a journal every day, uh -huh. almost every day. I've, I've, I've written in my prayer journal and I've written in my personal journals about where I went, who I saw, uh, what happened on the visit with the dogs, uh, how, how many people's lives have been changed for years. So they had this wealth of information that they could tap into. And what they did was they tapped into this journals uh, and then they created the stories around the actual true, trueness, the trueness of, the, of the journeys. But it was a powerful way of, of researching it. But yeah. uh, I was, that was a blessing because most people don't have the gift of a publisher wanting you to do something. You have to focus and write it yourself and then submit it. But uh, yeah. God did that. It was all about his plan. Very he knew exactly good. what was going to happen and he did it in that way. So it was beautiful. Very good. That is beautiful. All right, Larry, let's do a little mathematics so our friends all around the World Wide Web can get to know you through our happy formula. Okay. It's, it's a simple but powerful equation that goes like this. Power plus purpose equals happy. So let's start with power. What are your personal practices for building up all the power you need to get things done, whether it's physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, emotionally. In other words, Larry, what do you do on a regular basis to create all the power you need to take really good care of yourself and your loved ones and still have plenty left over so you can be a giver to others? Okay, well, physically, first of all, eating right. If eating healthy is such a major thing to feel better. And then combining that with regular exercise, Physically, those are the two major things I believe are, are very important components in order to gain strength and then power gains gets from strength. So physically, as you get older, particularly, you need those two components. Yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> the second thing mentally, uh, reading, I think, uh, gaining information and knowledge through uh, uh, reading and, and, and engaging your mind. My mother always said, God bless her soul, before she died at 83, is that she said, I, till the day I die, I want to read and I want to learn and I want to I want to engage my mind. And when I stop learning and reading, then, you know, it's over almost. Yeah. So reading, learning, every day doing something constructively with, with your mind. And I do that by journaling. And, and that's what I said earlier. Write in your journal. Get a prayer journal. Write out what you're going to do for the day. If you uh, write <laughs> out exactly what your prayers are and ask God to answer those prayers and praise him for that. And then over the time period of a year or two years, Go back and look and see what God has done. Powerful way of seeing God's witness in your life. And that's what I do mentally to focus in on my, myself. Spiritually, uh, as I wrote down in this morning, uh, set a time for prayer. And set a time for, for uh, communicating with God. And I do it very early in the morning when my mind is fresh and clear. I have my cup of coffee. I have my dog that's sitting, laying next to me. And God and I just talk. We just share. We just go into a deep conversation. And mm -hmm. then we can uh, we, we can uh, just communicate. And that's what all, all prayer is, is communicating with God, building that relationship you have with him. And uh, it's powerful what your day can start if you have that hour, whatever time you, you can devote to spending with him in that morning, in that context. So spiritually, I believe that early morning communication or any time really, but I do it early morning where you can focus better. OK, uh, financially, in this world, we have to obviously work to make money and, and, and uh, support ourselves. And uh, do something constructively in your life that, you know, give God the glory. The Bible says that you should work for him. You're not really you're working for man, uh, but whatever you do, give him the honor and glory. If it can be a cashier at the, at the grocery store, or it can be, uh, you know, CEO of a major real estate, it doesn't matter what it is, but 
put God first and then, you know, work, but you can work around that, you know, to make sure that God gives you the right things to do and the principles that he gives you to honor him in everything you do uh, as far as uh, financially. And, and emotionally, uh, well, everybody has emotions and you get ups and downs. We're just normal human beings. But uh, I, I use God's promises to, to in the scripture is to uh, uh, have get through the emotional breaks and count on him, his promises in my life to, uh, to uh, just to smooth those out, so to speak, so that there's no really highs and lows. It's all pretty consistent, but God gives you that, the beautiful way of, uh, of dealing with those. And it's all through Holy Scripture. It's all through the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible that you can't uh, find to help you emotionally. It's all in there. Yeah. So I use that as a, my emotional support system. When you're going through the ups and downs, as, as you've described it, if you don't, if you if you look at it through through God, then you realize that this real big high you're on, it's not because of you. It's because of God. And so you don't take yes. it so personally. And that's good. Yes. You shouldn't take your high. But then also when it's low, it's like, wait a second, you know, instead of blaming myself, I'm supposed to be learning something. And so now let me take the take the effort off of me and my woes and say, what is the lesson that he wants me to learn from this? And that does kind yes. of even things out, doesn't it, Larry? Yes, very much so. It sure does. Yes, sir. it does. Very good. All right, let's dive into my favorite power generating concept. It's called a Kaizen state of mind. It's this beautiful Japanese idea that small incremental improvements add up over time to yield great big results. And I love it, Larry, because it's based on mindset, not circumstance. Kaizen in life is knowing there's always something I can do better tomorrow than today. It creates an optimistic, gentle, but powerful and continuous uplifting of my life day after day after day. So, Larry, how does Kaizen in your life help you increase your power to continuously become more so you can continuously give more? That's interesting in the aspect of uh, that. The minute, minute I read about it, I thought of a proverb, Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding and always acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Stay the course. Stay the course. Keep on the path that God has set for you. You know, you're going to step off the path. Plenty of us all do and do all the time, but stay the course. Get back on the path. Ask God to get back to, to where you want to. And that, in, in my view, uh, can continually uh, uh, you know, give you more what God wants to give you because he wants you to stay on the path that he's direct, just like your purpose of your show, is that how do you gain more out of your life? What is the significance that you're going to be? Why are you on this earth? God has a path for you. He has a plan for you. You have to stay the course. Whatever that course is, just like the proverb said, you're, going, you're not going to understand sometimes. I didn't understand I was going to be in this ministry. I had no idea what therapy dogs were when I first started it. Yeah. But God knew. Yeah. <laughs> and he knew the path that he wanted me to take. Did I go up and down? Did I go off? Yes, I did. But he dragged me back on the path. He said, I'm going to get you back on the path. You just stay on that path and let's see what happens. I'm the God of possibilities, okay? You just follow me and lead me and I, and I will lead you down that path. So if you stay the course, God can change you and it's, he can. And so with that with that line of thinking and to, to apply Kaizen to it, it would be like the more, the first time you decide, okay, I feel God telling me to do this and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna follow his path. And then yes. something changes and then you do it again and you start to build muscle for following his path. You're building on each incremental step and the more you do it, the easier it gets. The more you add chapters of your of your organization, the easier each one gets. And that's that's how Kaizen enables you to do more, whether it's it's biblical or it's earthly or whatever, you can do more with less from this experience that you're gaining through yes. small incremental improvements. Yes, we started with no dog. When I started the yeah. ministry, I didn't have a dog. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so it I had to get a dog. I borrowed a dog. So it started with one borrowed dog. Then I got another one. And then other people came in. And then yo, yo and behold, here was God. He was working. And it was all through this journey that now you have thousands of people in this ministry. It's a, it's it's all God doing it. And, and but you have to stay the course. Because yeah. there's all kinds of temptations for you to get off the course. 
yeah. you know, you're running out of money, you're, you know, uh, you know, something happens or whatever that, and the, the, that's the enemy trying to get you off this course. Right. Stay the course. God will work. He will bless you if you just put your mind to it. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Good. So stay the course. That takes me to, to the second element of Happy Formula, exploring purpose. So Larry, I've observed that major life transformations or big discovery of purpose often comes from something devastating, addiction, abuse, death, disease, disaster, something horrible strips a life to its core, resulting in a big change, oftentimes resulting in, in looking to God for the first time, right? God, help me through this. So it's yeah. it's a big, awful thing creates this beautiful thing that comes out of it. However, in my book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I share a transformational process that I've used to discover my purpose in life using inspiration. So how about you, Larry? Was there a specific moment or event or crisis or inspiration that revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live? Yes, there was. And and uh, I don't know if you're too old not old enough to remember a song by Otis Redding called Doc on the Bay. Uh, oh, yes, I love a, that song. That song? Well, Sitting on a dock on the Bay, yeah. This is a story about that, okay? okay. And uh, years ago, uh, uh, I was a very successful real estate person. I mean, I had an investment company, and that was a big dog, okay? But through <laughs> uh, various circumstances in the real estate industry and the, and the economy at that time, uh, I had a business failure and my business failed. Uh, yeah. I went through a bankruptcy and yeah. this is all in the culmination of about in a two, two year span of time. What, business what, failure. What time, Larry, what time period was that? This was in the late eighties. Okay. Late. 80s, okay. Business okay. failure, bankruptcy and bankruptcy accumulated with a divorce and mm. then a uh, no, no job after that, mm -hmm. and a relocation to another city, Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So all the major setbacks in your life, I mean, job, no job, business failure, no money, uh, all this was accumulating into a very depressing state mm -hmm. for myself. And uh, so one day in uh, uh, in that, going to that period of my time, my two daughters at that time, uh, knew I was down, and they said, we're going to give you something that's going to help you. They didn't tell me that. They just surprised me with about a 12-pound basset hound. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> and they brought this dog into my little office in my home, and they said, you know, sad you've been, Dad, and we're going to give you something to bring joy in your life, and here's Gus. So <laughs> they brought great. Gus into my life. Big floppy-eared dog, yeah. ears dragging the ground, huge feet, just the goofiest looking thing you could, but he was the sweetest animal. And mm -hmm. if, over that period of time, it's amazing how God brought that vessel to me because he used that vessel to be the ministry of presence. He he was very strong in, in me to encourage me. And one day on a dock in Charleston, South Carolina, and that's where I was on the dock of the bay, I was meditating. I was contemplating, what am I going to do? How is, you know, I'm the failure. Uh, how did I get into this mess? Mm. Uh, you know, you, you self-analyze yourself. Mm. And that's wrong because that's what Satan wants you to do. And uh, and Gus came up to me and he, 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 he kind of saw I was whimpering and, you know, crying in my self. And he, he put yeah. his head on my lap and he sighed. He looked into his eyes and it was like he said to me, stay the course. It's going to be okay. You just wow. keep God's going to get you back on track. And I believe that was the Holy Spirit talking to me, you know, not necessarily through the dog, but it was certainly a way of, of him opening a pathway that I could now take a deep breath and say, all right, get back on your feet, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's start back again. Let's just, you're going to be okay, but you have to grow in this. This is a growing phase that God get, you know, put, put you in. And so from that point on, uh, that those four or five instances in my life where my journey was very dark, God put light in the journey, and He did it really through that little basset hound, and uh, it basset. started there, and then it grew from there. So uh, praise God for that. I'll, I'll I'll always remember that journey. It was powerful. He Amen. taught me a lesson. It was a lesson okay, journey. So that was quite a few. That was years and years before 2007 and starting Canines for Christ. So just tell us about a minute. 
what was the catalyst for creating Canines for Christ? Catalyst for, for creating Canines for Christ was really a, 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 what I call a small whisper. And God spoke to me in an early morning devotion uh, later on in my life in 2007 to, uh, you know, he, and out of the blue, because I had known nothing about therapy dogs at all. I was another real estate job. And he said, start therapy dog. Mm -hmm. the therapy dog. It was a vo voice in my, the whisper. He said, out of the blue. Yeah. Uh, totally nothing. And, he, and it was just like clear as a bell. He said, therapy dogs. Said, Whoa, okay. I don't have a dog, God. Help me with this. Okay. So, <laughs> so that was the catalyst of it. And then uh, uh, pray, you, you, uh, you give discernment and make sure that this is exactly what God was speaking to you about. And so uh my wife and I, you know, we talked about it, we prayed about it, we consulted with one of our pastors, and and, and this was the catalyst of starting a ministry. And I told God, I said, I'll we'll do this, God, we'll obey you, but you're gonna have to do everything. You're gonna have to help us create the ministry, you're gonna have to get bit dogs, you're gonna and he said, just obey me and trust me, and the doors will open. That was the catalyst, is that morning in 2007 when he said therapy dogs. I love it. So in my old format of the show, I used to ask at the end of the question, uh, different questions. And one of them, what was, what do you imagine you'll be doing 10 years from now? And I was talking with a guy, uh, his name is Trey Simbury. He runs a therapeutic boarding, Christian therapeutic boarding school for, for struggling teens down in Georgia. And he says, Matt, I don't know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, let alone 10 years from now. If I wake up tomorrow and God says, go sell shoes, I'll be selling shoes tomorrow. And so that's just how he lived his life. It's like every day, what do you want me to do, God? And that sounds like you listened to that uh, back in 2007. So uh, praise God. All right, Larry, let's take a quick commercial break for our sponsor to spread a little love with our audience. If you have more ideas than actions, if you have more promises than change, if you're ready for the life you are meant to live, then TI2A is the book for you. And we're back, and this is the Something Significant Show, and I'm your host, Matt Gersper. And my special guest star today is Chaplain Larry Randolph. He's the founder of Canines for Christ, an international Christian-based animal-assisted therapy ministry that uses ordinary people and their beloved dogs to share God's message of love, hope, kindness, and compassion to those in need. God has blessed many people and changed many lives through this ministry. Larry and his entire organization are honored to give God all the glory and humbled to be representing our Lord Jesus Christ in communities yeah. all over the world. Oh, Larry, I do love that. And yeah. I think you're going to love this article that I found on LiveScience.com. It's called The Science Behind the Power of Giving. And it says the act of giving itself can be a gateway to discovering your reason for being on the planet. It tells how science supports the idea that giving one's time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway for discovering purpose and overcoming difficulties and finding fulfillment and meaning in life. So Larry, I updated our formula. Power plus purpose plus giving equals really happy. So what do you think, Larry? Has giving your time and your talents and your treasures been a powerful pathway for discovering your purpose and for getting past difficulties that you've faced and for bringing real meaning into your life? Well, giving is a powerful uh, discipleship uh, uh, method. And Jesus said in the Bible, he came to serve, not to serve, not to be served. So uh, in giving is a part of serving. And as this ministry in uh, all these years in my uh, uh, starting the ministry, and uh, I've served so many people in so many different ways, the lonely, the sick, the sad, the hospice patients, people that are that are in crisis situations, military, and uh, and it's changed your life because when you're serving other people out of love, God's love, and and you want to you know bless that people and do the ministry of what I call the ministry of presence because when you're serving these people, God's with you on these visits, and it changes not only their perspective of their journey, but it changes you too. Because yeah. you you get a lot out of serving and uh, and not only giving your financial gifts, but you get a lot out of just seeing the when you when I leave a 
a hospital uh, uh, patient. And I see the joy that I've given them by bringing my dog into that room and letting them see the smile. And then I can pray with them or I can, you know, just offer them some support and encouragement. Yeah. I leave there and I can just feel the overwhelming, the, oh, the peace, the joy that God gives you by serving. Because he told us, he said, serve others. And that's the, what he left us with. So it's, uh, uh, and I've been blessed to, to be part of that because uh, I can do it every day. I can get up every morning and I can go serve with this dog and, and that's uh, bring life and joy into people's lives through God's blessings. It's a powerful, it's a powerful you know, I, ministry. I find it really interesting. So, you know, the, the Bible is so rich with everything that we need to know. And yet we try to figure it out because it's beyond our, it's really his ways are beyond our ways. And don't, what do you think about how science over time, like this is science is telling us that giving is good for you and for others. Well, the Bible said that too, but now the you know the science is finally catching up to what God and Jesus told us directly all those years ago. Correct? That's correct. Yes, he, uh, uh, the Bible's like the uh, you know it's been around thousands of years, but it's still perfect for today. If you just yeah. you know we have all these self help books and everything else, but yeah. really the Bible is the only self help book you need. Yeah, I agree. It's so. So science tells us that giving to others helps bring real meaning to our life, as Jesus did already. And that feeling that comes from our fourth element of significance, doing work that creates value for others confirms it, like you were just talking about when you leave a hospital. But there's something even more to it than just the giving, Larry. And I feel it deep within my spirit. What I've been learning is that it's when you're giving from living in your purpose, that's where you find the real magic of life. So now, Larry, our audience and I would like to experience how it makes you feel to be happily living your life and giving to others through the work you were put on this planet to do and the people around you have taken notice. So, Larry, just sit back, open your heart, and have a listen to what people are saying about the impact that you're making on their lives by finding the magic of purpose in your life. One person told me, Larry is a great guy with a heart for God. Another said... God had just brought a dog into my life when I heard Chaplain Larry doing an interview on the radio, and I realized why. She, the dog, just loved people so much. We went through training to get our AKC Canine Good Citizens Certificate and applied to become a member of Canines for Christ. We haven't looked back. We've made over 75 visits to memory care and assisted living facilities, National Guard, veterans councils, and hospice in just two years. Another said... Amazing. His legacy is huge. Others say, I'm so happy. I was so happy when Larry visited with his dog. That warm nose and wagging tail, I think they're talking about the dog. That warm <laughs> nose and wagging tail made me laugh and smile. Another said, his beautiful dog and kind gestures have meant so much to me. I'm so lonely, but Larry's visit made my day. Another, we're so grateful for Larry's obedience to the call to begin this ministry. To God be the glory. Another said, love you, Larry. And another, thank you and may God bless you. And finally, this person said, thank you for sharing that God loves me today and every day. I really needed to hear that. I was down and depressed, but hearing that God is with me and loves me has lifted me up. Thank you so much. So, Larry, how does all that love make you feel? You know, it's overwhelming. You know, I'm humbled by it. And uh, it's all, you know, God's grace that uh, he's he's uh, he's given me the opportunity. I always ask, not always, but sometimes, why me, Lord? Why me did you give me this opportunity to serve you in this capacity and, and be able to disciple other people in this journey? Because it's impacted so many lives. And uh, it's God's grace and his love for me. And uh, I've been obedient and faithful and I just give him all the glory because it's all about him. It's never been, been about one person or one dog. It's been about, this is God's ministry. It's God's book. And it's all about giving him the glory. And because of this, Matt, he blesses it. He's blessed it over and beyond. A cup overflows all the time because of his great blessings, because we give him the glory. And it's a, it's powerful. That's awesome. And, and that's what this show is about. We call it finding that magic, but it's really finding God's purpose in each of our lives. And it's available for all of us. Uh, at least that's what I believe. And it comes from this great big happy circle. When you 
when you're giving your time and talents and treasures, those are the gifts that God gave you. That's a powerful pathway for discovering your purpose, your reason for being on this planet. And giving from living in your purpose brings a profound joy to your life. I can see it in your eyes that you're having this amazing, joyful experience, but also to the lives of those around you. So it seems that giving leads to purpose and giving from purpose leads to joy. So to truly capture the exponential power of our happy formula, Larry, I've got to tweak it just a tiny bit more. You see how this sounds? Okay. Power times purpose times giving equals happy to the third power. And that's really, truly, deeply happy. Does that sound about right to you? It does. Sounds right on to me. So it's a powerful formula. And uh, people can, uh, can adhere to that. And, you know, as I said, uh, stay on the course and let God work with you on it. And he will help you in any, any way. It's a beautiful thing. Let him direct you. Amen. Absolutely. Wonderful. All right, Larry, let's wrap things up the lightning round. I love the power of words and the capacity for great quotes to change lives. So I'm going to read a few of yeah. my favorites and have you tell us what they mean to you. And Larry, give us the first thing that comes to your mind because we call this a lightning round. Okay? Yeah. There we go. From Nora Roberts, everything I know I've learned from dogs. Compassion. Very good. Okay. Everything I know I've learned from dogs, you said compassion. Okay. This is from a friend's mom. Um, I'm actually interviewing her just in a, uh, the end of this week. And I just lost my dog, Larry. My my beloved Sir Charles Barkley died on October 15th and I buried him on October 18th. So there's been oh, this sorry. real, there's been this beautiful yes. outreach from uh, so oh gosh. But anyway, she I said, know. she said to me, my mom always said you can see God in a dog's eyes. Would be, let me think. Uh, he has a soul. A soul. And you talked about that on the dock with Gus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is from Phyllis Schomacher. She said, with all that God created, would it be unreasonable to think that God also made dogs to teach us about his love for us? Powerful example of the ministry of presence. Mm, very good. From Whit Witter Biner. He said, be concerned not with obedience, but with benefit, and you're at the core of living. Trust. Very good. From Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, one of my favorites, do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Be kind to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. From Matthew chapter 25, verse 20, truly, I tell you, whatever you did, for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Jesus lives inside you. Be kind again and, and, and love others. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wrote about this, that very passage. And I think what I ended up saying is that if we were, if we're walking down the road and we saw Jesus mm -hmm. needing food or Jesus needing clothes or Jesus needing kindness, of course, all of us would stop and give that. And that's what he's telling us is they all are me, right? That's right. He said that. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is the show anchor. It's from Goth. He said, whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. And I would twist that just a little bit to make it biblical. And say what what Goth is saying is when God tells you something, begin it and be obedient. Listen to God. Yeah. Listen and obey. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. And now, folks, it's your chance to be a giver too. If you can hear my voice and you were inspired by today's show with Chaplain Larry Randolph, won't you please share a little love with our magnificent broadcast team by giving what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Larry, I love that you created Canines for Christ to use the natural love we have for dogs to break down barriers as an opening to share the good news about Jesus. And I admire your mission to shine the love and hope and compassion of Christ on the sick, 
and the elderly and the lonely and depressed and the injured and the suffering and even those who are dying in communities all across our nation and all around the world. And I'm super happy that you've shared your passion for loving God and people and dogs on our show today. Will you please take a minute or two and share any parting remarks you'd like to leave with our audience? Well, just that uh, if uh, if you're looking for a, a path in your life to serve and to uh, serve God and and uh, the, your community, this is a wonderful ministry. And uh, you know, uh, you, with your dog, you can do this, and it can bring life and joy into people's lives. And you can present the message of Christ. It's a great witnessing tool and a great tool to uh, just to open the door so that you can communicate with people because the dog does the 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 first part, they create the, break the ice, and then you can talk to people well about God love. It's a beautiful way of uh, volunteering. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. And I also want to thank WITV7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guest stars like Larry and reaching folks just like you, ready to create your own extraordinary lives. And most especially, thank you, viewers and listeners. You'll find links to social media and all things Larry Randolph find him, friend him, shop their online store where all proceeds go directly to benefit the Canines for Christ ministry. And, or, and let's say, and make the decision to volunteer or to donate or even more to support and serve as a team member in your community. Learn all about your options at k9forchrist.org. That's the letter K, the number nine, F-O-R-C-H-R-I-S-T dot O-R-G. One more time, k9forchrist.org. From me to you, dear friends, I love you, and I want you to be really, truly, deeply happy, too. So go to happyliving.com right now and take our happy quiz, because when you measure your happy, it helps you focus your attention on it, and focusing your attention on it attracts change and learning and improvement all to flow right into your life. And once you take the quiz, and it only takes a minute, then give some thought to what we can do together, you and me to improve the happy of your world one person at a time. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome. And this is the Something Significant Show.